love. She dolls ever since she was a little girl, growing up in Spring Grove Township. She um, but is here today to present her a few of her doll collections and educate us about um, a century of dolls. Marie? Yes, thank you. I've always liked dolls, like she said, and I was started country school when I was six years old and teacher asked if I had any sisters. I didn't have any, but my dolls were so real to me, I named my three sisters. I could still see the look on her face because she knew the family. I wasn't getting back. <laughs> anyway, I thought it would be fun to do a different type of a program, so I took a few from my uh, for each decade out of my collection and uh, starting with 1890, I, I took about three or four, otherwise you get too many, you know, when you're thinking of ten decades. So I'll start with 1890 to 1900. This is a Minerva tin head, and she was made in 1900. And she was made in Germany. Sears Roebuck advertised this doll head was made of sheet brass. And in those days, they could probably order the head and make the body. I have dressed her. And this is what we call a French fashion in 1890. And she, her marking in the back of her neck, that's how we identify these older dolls. 1890. Germany and Lily and she's dressed in French fashion in the early days women from England were writing to France how they should dress because there at that time there were not any fashion magazines or TV of course so Fra uh, France would dress dolls and send them to colonial America and to England and these dolls were dressed they would sort of be service the mannequin blonde china head, 1895, made in Germany, and she's rare because of the jewels in her breastplate. She has leather arms, and I have redressed her. This is a little, another little china head with a pet name of Ethel, and uh, she was made in 1890. She has the alphabet body. They made them with battleships or flags or alphabets. And I didn't want to dress her because I thought that was kind of interesting. And uh, there's a little article about her from a Norwegian newspaper my friend sent me. And the title is Expensive Little Dolls. And there she's pictured. That's that doll. So now we go into 1900 to 1910. And this is 1900 scowling American Indian made in Germany by Armin Marseille. The wig is black mohair. He has glass eyes. And this required a special mold because of the facial features. This one's original. This is another old German doll, and she's all original. 1908, Segu Bruger, Krauso, 1863 to 1921, the marks on her neck. And then she's all original, except the shoes and stockings. This is another. Um, Floridora, 1901, bisque head, in the trademark registered in Germany, and she's all original except her shoes. Some of the clothing has deteriorated quite a bit, but if it's this good, I like to keep it. This is, now we go into the century, 1910 to 1920, and this is 1911, and she's called Daisy. My Companion, Germany, made by Simon Halbig. And this doll 
was offered by Ladies Home Companion for selling four subscriptions. The girl would send in four dollars and fifty cents for four subscriptions and get this doll. And this doll was given to me by my an elderly lady in Houston that knew I liked dolls and wanted me to have her sister's doll. Yes, okay. Now we are in century 1910 to 1920, and this one is 1912 in Germany, and uh, she has a composition body made by Armin Marseille, and this has been redressed. She's pretty down. And these are twins, all original, 1912 by Armin Marseille of Germany. They have sleep eyes, bisque head, composition body, and all original. It was an auction sale in La Crosse. This is an interesting story. And they had these two dolls. And I was bidding till I thought, now I have to stop. This is it. So I stopped. After a while, the auctioneer said, sold to that man in blue behind me. And here it was Arnold. And the auctioneer said, which one do you want? He said, I'll take them both. So I got twins. <laughs> so they're special. Now we go into the century 1920 to 1930. And this is the kind of a doll I always like to play with. I didn't like those stiff ones twisted their elbows. I like this kind of baby doll. So this is a horseman baby doll from 1928. She's called Baby Dimples, composition head with painted molded hair, tin sleep eyes, open mouth, smiling face, and a cloth body. I think every little girl likes this type of a doll. This is interesting doll, all cellulite, 1920, 16 inches tall. She has molded and painted hair and glass eyes and hair eyelashes. She's marked with a turtle mark in the back of her head, and that this is a Kessner made before 1925. That was the year they quit making them. And I think she's a lot, she reminds me of the Kathy Cruises. Well, we go into the century of 1930 to 1940. This is a little Patsy Jr. by F and B. Patsy was a very big line with F and B's, and she's all composition. Dated 1931, 1932, and she has molded hair. Patsy Jr. And this is an early Madame Alexander, little Betty, 1937, nine inches tall, composition, and. She was dressed for the countries or fairy tales. So this would be United States. She has her tag and she's all original. And it's interesting now to see how far the Alexander Company, they're still producing dolls, started in 1923 in uh, New York and still in big business. Now we come to another Patsy, 1935 by F and B, all composition, the original dress, and her heart bracelet. This was my birthday present from Arnold four years before we're married. He bought this doll. He's bought me dolls ever since. This is a Shirley Temple from 1934 by Ideal. 
and I dressed her for Christmas because I was going to my doll Christmas party in La Crosse. And that day morning in December, we had eight inches of snow, so the doll and I didn't get to the party, but she had her new dress. Christmas socks and Christmas dress. This is an interesting doll from 1948, a Buddy Lee, the engineer doll made by H.D. Lee Company Incorporated. Dolls were dressed in miniature copies of uniforms man manufactured by H.D. Lee. And there are about 17 different uniforms that have been found. This is all original. you see the Lee in the back. Got his Rockford socks. Now we go into the, this is 1945, an Aaron B. Sonia Henney. She's all composition with glued on, mohair wig, and uh, she has the mark R and B on her head. And I redressed her because the clothing was very bad. They originally came with a skating. And she has a little Olympic medal dated Olympic gold. 28, 32, and 38. We're still in the decade of 1940 to 1950. This is a little black doll and uh, She's 1948 Amos Andra. This doll is from the Amos and Andy radio show. Ruth no Newton was the designer of dolls for Sun Rubber Company and the Columbia Broadcasting. And uh, at that time, there weren't too many black dolls, so that makes her kind of special. And I'd made all these little doll clothes for a little girl in Spring Grove that passed away when she was 12 years old. And at the auction, that her parents had. I went to the auction, I bought the clothes back, and they just fit her, so she's got a lot of clothes to wear. Jenny dolls were very popular in the 40s for the young girls. This one is all original. Sleep eyes, lashes, and a glued on wig. Little Jenny. And She's what they call a walker. See, her head moves when, you turn her, when she walks, her head moves. And then we have the Tony doll. At, this was in 1949. Tony doll by Ideal. All hard plastic and a glued on wig and sleep eyes. And, uh, the little girls got the Tony permanent kit with her and they could give her permits. So that was a fun job. I still have the pattern. I used to make doll clothes, make calls, and it, it really dates you when you see the price, 35 cents. And now you know most patterns are $7.95. This is a little Nancy Ann doll, and it's in the Fairyland series. She always came in a polka dot box, and she's got the hearts, so she's February, the hearts of head. Now we move, now we'll go to the 1950 to 1960. And this doll is interesting because she was poor, pitiful Pearl. She was made by a cartoonist, William Steed. She wishes she could have a 